Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time, before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each will receive his commendation from God. O Lord, have mercy on us. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit sermon in three parts. First, on the office of the ministry. Second, on judgment. And third, on the indifference of a pastor and of a Christian. First, the office of the ministry. Paul here tells us a chief and important thing about the office of the ministry, how we are to consider pastors, an extension of him as an apostle of Christ, but just in the passage before he included with him and with Cephas, also Apollos, of that first generation of preachers. We are slaves of Christ Jesus, and we are stewards of God's mysteries. It's interesting that he says we're slaves of Christ Jesus, because just before this he said to the Corinthians, all things are yours, including me and Paul and Cephas and Apollos, all of us are your servants in Christ Jesus. And yet he says that we are slaves that answer not just to the people that we serve, but to Christ himself, bound to him, bound to what he says, which is why it makes sense that he follows it up with stewards of the mystery, a steward that must serve at the behest, at the direction of his master. Stewards of the mysteries of God, a word that has long been understood to mean the sacraments, and certainly it does, but not only the sacraments, but all of those things that were hidden from this world and remain hidden to it, but are well known to you Christians, the Word of God, His truth, who our Lord is, the Holy Trinity, the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, and yes, His blessed sacraments as well. It is required of stewards of these mysteries that they be found trustworthy, that they be faithful. That's the number one concern. What does that mean? It means that they are the sort of people who are reliable to be left by the master to do their work, and he can trust them. Reliable and not lazy, that they'll sit down on the job and not do the work that they were hired and sent to do. Likewise, not those who will begin to work for themselves instead of for their master's benefit and according to his command. And those who will not act in a way that is not like the master would like it to be, those who would not use his possessions, his mysteries, in a way that the master would not regard well. That then is a summary of what a pastor, what anyone in the office of the ministry ought to be, a slave of Christ in this way and a steward at all times of his great gifts. Second then, Paul goes on to speak at length about judgment. Now, judgment is a hard word for our time because nobody wants to be judging or judgmental. And yet I think you'd agree with me, this is probably one of the most judgmental times in history. Judge has two meanings, and it's very important we see Paul's playing with them. First, it means what people say when they say, don't judge me. 
They mean don't condemn me, don't pass a sentence of guilty and condemned upon me. But the second meaning, which is the first in the dictionary, is to discern, to regard something in a certain way, to think, period. Now God's the one who gets to pass sentence. Sometimes he does it by his ministers. He always does it by his clear word and truth, which he has caused to be written down in the Holy Scriptures by his spirit. But judging also means discerning, and that's something that we as Christians are able to do. We discern what is right. We do it according to God's commandments, not our own standards. We know the Lord is the judge who sees and judges rightly and truly. He sees right to the heart, as Paul gets to at the end. He sees even deeper than our own understandings of motives and conscience. And when people say, let God be the judge, they almost always mean not what Paul says, but really I just don't want anybody to judge me. The second meaning is very important too, though, because judgment is not only in the bad things, it's in the good things. When you affirm something, when you say, this is right, or I like this, or I'm going to support this thing, you're making a judgment as well. And if somebody requires you to affirm something, they will judge you based on how you judge. You see, all this is in play. And it's significant for us as Christians because our salvation is tied up with judgment. We know that the Lord is the judge of the world, and we wish to stand before him at the last day and survive it, not be cast into condemnation. Thus, as Paul is uh, at pains to say in all of his letters, we are justified by faith in Christ Jesus and his sacrifice. That's how we'll stand in the last day. That's how we will endure the Lord's judgment. That's how we'll be found right with God, is by trusting in Christ Jesus, that he then would regard that faith as righteousness and therefore regard us as his own Christians, those who are righteous by faith in Christ's blood, that is the mystery of the gospel that is preached to you. Now it is important to see that when Paul goes on to talk about not really thinking very much that you might judge me as a pastor and an apostle, not being interested in what the human courts might have to say, he is being indifferent to the judgment and the discerning and the thoughts of others. How can Paul be so indifferent because he knows whose judgment really matters. He knows that God in Christ Jesus has counted him righteous. He wants to be found pleasing and right in God's sight. The rest of the world's judgment then becomes such a minor, light, and insignificant thing to him. By his works, he knows what the Lord commands of him, how he has a certain job as a steward of the mysteries, that's what he will do and seek the Lord's commendation in those works. When it comes then to his salvation, his identity, his value and his hope and his confidence, that is entirely wrapped up in Christ Jesus. We should see this kind of indifference in our preachers. And sad to say we don't always. That is, Preachers who are not subject to public opinion. Preachers who are not gauging their preaching for affirmation from those who might hear them or for approval of people. Pastors should not be worried if people don't like them. As we see with Paul, who was not always gentle, not always aiming to be loved in every situation, but always is aiming to be a steward of the mysteries of God, not for condemnation, but for salvation to his hearers. And since Paul is so bold as to talk about us not pronouncing judgment, maybe on our pastors, but also in general before the Lord himself comes, as the Lord discloses all the secrets of the heart, and each one... Here, I think not only pastors, but all Christians will receive and seek their commendation from God. 
we should realize that this indifference of the gospel applies to all of us Christians as well. Your Lord has shed his blood for you. Your Lord is risen from the dead. Your Lord sits at the right hand of God and rules everything. So of what concern is it if you are unliked in this world? Of what concern is it if you don't always receive the approval and positive judgment of those around us? Those who, as we sang in the hymn, do not see this. Those who are haughty, who are caught up in pride. Our concern, rather, is to cast out what would offend our Lord. Our concern is to be those who, by grace alone, have the truth and the light of Christ Jesus. And in that judgment, we hope, in his commands, we know how to judge justly and rightly, even when we must accuse ourselves and seek his forgiveness. And through that, then, we are given boldness and confidence to consider all the judgments of this world a light and unimportant thing. God grant us that indifference in the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.